This is a laptop I have mounted in my van. It's an older one, but it's good enough to watch some movies and whatnot, listen to some music. Conveniently folds down like this. Right now I have it powered with this inverter here. It's just a 100 watt inverter, but it's enough for this. And then it goes to this power supply and then goes to here. So my plan is to replace this and this with this. This is a DC to DC converter. Okay, I just want to talk a little bit about what a DC to DC converter is and why I would want to use one. Okay, so this is Amazon.com's page, and this is um, right here, the product that I ordered from them. And um, just to, um, you'll notice here, okay, so it's GoWox 5-piece, um, 150 watt, DC to DC, okay, 10 through 32 volts to 12 to 35 volt step down, or um, step up boost converter. Anyway, that's a mouthful. Um, but you'll notice like that this is a, I got this one, and I don't know, I, I probably don't really need five of these right now, but... I mean, this was like, but this was like two for thirteen dollars. This was five for sixteen, basically. So I mean, it's like, you know, that's almost like half price. So it's like this turned out to be like, um, like th about three dollars each. And so I already thought of a couple things that I might be able to use it for in the future. So I'll just go ahead and keep these stored up, and then maybe you know, sometime be able to use them. Now, one thing you want to notice it says it's a step up boost converter. So as far as I can tell, it's it seems like the yeah the DC to DC converters are either the ones that step down the voltage or step up the voltage, which makes sense. And then they um, so the thing about it then is yeah it's almost like they're kind of like similar kind of like transformers, but for DC you know they're a little more complicated than transformers. But anyway, so but anyway so this is basically how it works. Okay, this is kind of a crude diagram, but let's just say I'm going to have this squiggle represent D AC alternating current, and then this represent DC because and the reason why is because if without getting too much into it, but AC the voltage goes up and down the direction of the current changes, so that's why I made it like a like a wave. But in DC it's just like an arrow because it's just a it always goes in one direction. So all right, so the way I had it before was you start with the battery at 12 volts, and in order to get to 19 volts because we can't just hook it up directly to um, 12 volt to 19 volts, it's not going to work being that you know a big voltage difference. So then it goes to the inverter, becomes the squiggle here, and then it goes through the power supply, and, and then it becomes DC again, but now it's a, a higher voltage, okay? And then, um, you know, and then each one of these steps, it loses like a little bit of conversion process, so it loses a little bit of that, so it's sort of like, um, well, anyway, it just loses, so let's say this is like the amount of energy, and then maybe it goes a little bit shorter than, you know, even... Okay, anyway, well, anyway, so it's it loses energy in two different steps of these conversions. Um, and but this one you only lose energy in the one step but the reasons why to use a DC to DC converter instead of an inverter and power supply less energy loss in conversion which I just mentioned less bulky parts in the way yeah because it was gonna be tough with that power supply and all that stuff it would be kind of tough to um, have that all that around and then have to strap that to the wall somehow you know that's that's bulky stuff that's in the way and plus if I wanted to like keep that an inverter that was going to be just used for that that means I did that you'd have to have that and then let's say if you had some other device and you wanted to only use a dedicated inverter then you'd have to have one of those big things too so anyway okay so then which should save inverter plug for other things yeah because I want to use that inverter for um, other things I don't want to just use it for the computer so then I'll keep it free for devices that aren't going to be mounted all the time see this is something that's mounted all the time that's why I'm doing it in a permanent way but if it was something that I was just going to occasionally bring out there but you know that I just use it like a plug and then I get to always keep it plugged in yeah because if I didn't have I'd have to take it out whenever I use something else if I didn't um you know if I was using the inverter and then cheaper well it's cheaper if um let, let's say if I had like um a bunch of different spots here let's just say I had like one device here you know and I wanted to have it always plugged in so I have to have like the inverter and a power supply over here and then like oh there's something else I want to have plugged in I have like a inverter and a power supply. <laughs> like these pictures well, it's, kind of, it's kind of hard to write with a mouth draw the mouse like this okay and then you have this and then okay so that means you have to have this for each one well I think a hundred watt inverter I mean you could probably get it for like about like 15 bucks or 10 bucks or something like that so it'd be like 15 bucks for each one of these connections you have and then but that thing was only like three bucks okay so the first thing I gotta do is I need to figure out if this or actually to set to set this thing to the correct voltage okay so anyway 
So you can see here on the bottom. Okay, you got these. Okay, you got these four different places um, where you put the different wires in, and then um, and screw this down like this. And then, so you can, if you can read that, it's kind of hard to read that. Um, it says plus in, minus in, minus out, and plus out. Okay, so the idea is that you that what I would do is hook this up to a 12 volt source with the in with the um which one was it okay with the plus in the plus out of the of 12 volts and then and then just use a voltmeter across here and see what voltage i get over here and then what i do is turn this screw until i get the right voltage out so i got the positive of the 12 volt power supply going into this screw here and then i got the negative of the 12 volt power supply going into that one and I don't know if you can't. I don't know if you can see because it's flash with this flash on here, but it's this light here is actually glowing red, which tells you. Actually, maybe if I turn this light off, you can see that. Let's see. Um, no, still probably can't. Okay, but anyway, but that lets you know that it works, and then that's it, that um, it's on. And then let's see if I go like this, you can see. Um, that's oh, I'm sorry, I got it. This, oh, flip this over here. Okay, <laughs> it was reading something weird because I had it set on AC or something. Okay, so. Okay, yeah, so it's 12 volts. Okay, so so now what I've got to do is i got to put these like this. Okay, so that, this is what the output voltage is right now. It's like 32, which I, I forget what the range was. But it was I think it was something like 35 or something. So I think i got to turn to the left. Let's see. Okay, okay so I'm turning it counterclockwise, and you can see that as I keep going further... Um, it's um lower volt the voltage gets lower the output voltage yeah. okay. okay so it takes quite a few turns in order to get it to change much yeah. okay that's hard to do okay actually sit down here and do this okay it's still in the camera yeah okay all right Yeah, it's hard to hold this with one hand and then hold these these volt these um electro or what do you call them? these leads for the for the okay okay I'm almost down to twenty and then I'm going to switch the scale on the voltmeter I think let's see probably nothing here okay. well actually I don't think there's any exposed amount any exposed um anyway live wires on the top okay I mean like there's these wires but these are gonna be insulated so mm -hmm. oh oh what am I doing I overshot it huh daydreaming okay okay so nineteen point two okay it's 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 saying negative but that's fine I could just just because that's it's just because I got it backwards. Okay, you can see that 19.5, and it should be really steady. So that's um a nice thing. Um, okay, so this this should be ready to go as far as I mean I've got a lot more to do, but as far as like now it's set to the right voltage. Um, I have these two these two wires here on one end. They're they're stripped here, so they've been this thing's been cut in half and to a pre. I already have it stripped down to the size, which I already know is going to fit in there. I kind of tried it, so. Anyway. And then on this side I have just this original computer connection and then this one I went ahead and put these ring connectors. There's plenty of videos how to put ring connectors on, so I'll spare you that and you'll see in a little bit like where those are gonna attach. Okay, so it feels pretty nice and strong in there. And this one is the in the one with the ring connectors is the input. And the output is the one with that computer um, type attachment. Okay, time to go out to the stove. As the snow flies on a cold and dusty afternoon or nighttime, a man puts together some electrical stuff in his van. Yeah, in his van. Yeah. 
you hopes not to get fried. Okay, so anyway, that's my little Elvis thing. Uh, still gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna do that. And then, um, so, um, okay, so here's my, a little bit confusing looking, but okay, here's the fuse box I have. And um, there's the solar controller there for the solar panel. But, but you can see out of this fuse box, I have this one cable that, a live wire that goes across there, and then it comes down there, and then I've got, um, it's screwed here to a couple different things. The so one goes this inverter. So, and I got this covered with um, hot glue, which I've read in like forums and stuff. Apparently, like you know, different people who do a lot of electro stuff say it's fine. You know, it's non-conductive, but the only thing it is kind of permanent, so it's gonna be a little harder to take this off. But I'm gonna add another ring connector on there. This is the ground one, which doesn't have to be insulated because really the whole body of the car, I mean the van, is grounded, so it doesn't really matter. The main key is just keeping the live wires, the hot wire, whatever you want to call it, the positive. Um, and then anyway, then, and this one just goes down here and it's grounded. Actually, actually it's grounded. I'm playing that furnace that I can have on right now because that thing's grounded, so it's screwed into that. So anyway, so I got to just put those, um, attach those real quick. Before I do this, a smart thing would be just to just pull this 30 amp fuse out here. I could pull these off, but I don't know. I'm having kind of bad experiences with those things. It seems like they kind of Sometimes if you're not too careful, like they, these things like come loose. So I'll just, okay. And this thing has like a red light that comes on that shows it the fuse is out. Okay, so now I'll be good as far as like not frying myself over here, so. Okay, so I got that put in there. Um, now that, that positive is exposed, but I'll just, I'll just leave it there just for a, a minute, just to, until I see it works, then I'll, and then I'll put the hot glue back on it again, you know, cover up the, so you don't have exposed positive metal positive wire right there. <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna put the fuse back in here and um if I can find it. Really. First thing I'll do I'll make sure the voltage is still the same what it's supposed to be. Put the leads of the um the voltmeter and indeed I couldn't it's hard. I couldn't really film it and then hold them in the right spot at the same time. But you'll just take my word for it that it said 19.0. I mean, 19.5. <laughs> Uh-oh, the light's not coming on. Okay, there's the device hooked up there. And uh, going up to the screws there. And then going hook up to the computer there. And so it turns out that it was a little more complicated than I thought as far as it turns out that these Dell these Dell laptops they have in the charger there's this chip that sends a signal to the laptop and lets it know that it's a certified Dell um, charger or whatever and then and then then somehow the computer then decides to allow it to charge the battery so but because this doesn't have this device doesn't have that what happens now is that just um, I can plug it in and have it plugged into this thing and then and it'll run for as long as I want on that and I can just keep um you know, keep it on forever hooked up like that, you know, as long as I got power to my um batteries in the van of course. <laughs> and then um but then but it's not doesn't charge the battery. So what I could do is just sometime just hook up to an inverter one another charger and just get that battery all charged up and then it'll just and what that would be for is just so if um, it would make it to where if I like pulled the cord out or something, that that it wouldn't just like instantly die or something. I have a chance to put the cord back in. Yeah.